Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Himmat Singh Side Q3 and 9 months FY23 results conference call hosted by Ilara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Prerna Junjunwala from Ilara Securities Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Seema. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Ilara Securities India Private Limited, I would like to welcome you all for Q3 and 9 month FY23 post resolve of Himmat Singha Sider Limited. Today we have with us the senior management of the company, including Mr. Shrikant Himmat Singha, the managing director and CEO, Mr. K.P. Rangraj, President Finance and Group CFO, Mr. Dilip Panjwani, Executive Vice President and CFO Strategic Finance, Ms. Shilpa Shanbag, VP Strategic Finance. I would now like to hand over the call to the senior management of the company, post which we can take Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rangaraj, President Finance and Group CFO, addressing the earnings call. Uh, on behalf of Imad Singha, we would like to welcome you all to the Q3 FI23 earnings call. I will first take you through the business update, as always, and followed by comments on financials, and after which the floor will be open for Q&A sessions, Managing Director Shrikan Imad Singha. Um, I will now start off with a business update for uh, Q3 FI23. Our Q3 FI23 operating performance has clogged the progressive improvement sequentially on the back of improved capacity utilization, reducing raw material prices, softening energy cost, and the continued easing of supply chain networks and co network costs. As a result of the above capacity utilization across all plants, witness sequential improvement during the quarter. The capacity utilization levels for our manufacturing facilities during the quarter stood, at, stood as follows. Our territorial division recorded 65% capacity utilization in, the, in Q3 FY23 versus 56% in the previous quarter. Sheeting division recorded 58% capacity utilization in the current quarter versus 53% in the previous quarter. And the spinning division recorded 90% capacity utilization uh, in the current quarter against 75% in the previous quarter. <clears throat> During the quarter, revenue streams from brands stood at rupees 448 crores versus 556 crores during the previous quarter. Sorry. During the previous year and 402 crores uh, during the previous quarter. So I, correct, I repeat once again, revenue streams from brands stood at 448 crores uh, in the current quarter was 402 crores during the previous quarter. Our Q3 operating performance witnessed progressive sequential improvement in line with our expectations. We remain focused on enhancing our capacity utilization levels, price optimization in initiatives, and enhancing market share across key regions and channels we operate in. In addition, deleveraging and improving working capital cycles continue to be central to our operating strategy going forward. Key raw material prices continue to see gradual softening from the previous peak levels witnessed during the first half of the year. In addition, we also continue to see marginal softening of energy costs and supply chain costs during the quarter. I now move on to the next section, which is comments on financials. Um, consolidated financial performance for the quarter. Consolidated total income for the quarter stood at rupees 750.04 crores versus 792.68 crores in the previous year. This represents a decline of 5.4% year on year. Consolidated EBITDA for the quarter was 117.04 crores versus 131.76 crores in the previous year. The EBITDA margin for the quarter stood at 15.6%. Consolidated EBIT for the quarter stood at 75.58 crores versus 91.57 crores in the previous year. Consolidated PBT for the quarter stood at 3.25 crores versus 43.83 crores in the previous year. And finally, consolidated PAT for the quarter stood at 2.2 crores versus 27.05 crores in the previous year. 
comments on debt profile. The consolidated gross debt as of 31st December 22 stood at Rs. 2,766 crores compared to Rs. 2,898 crores at the end of Q2 FY23, which is the previous quarter. The total term debt stood at Rs. 1,652 crores and the total working capital debt stood at Rs. 1,114 crores. The cash and cash equivalent stood at Rs. 127 crores as of 31st December 22. In addition, the total amount of unused, unused DTL scripts stood at Rs. 103 crores as of 31st December 22. Consequently, the company's net debt outstanding as of 31st December 22 stood at Rs. 2,639 crores compared to Rs. 2,773 crores as of uh, 30th September 22, which is the previous quarter. With this, I would like to complete my update. I would now um, request our Managing Director, Srikant Matsinka to answer the Q&A session. Thank you once again for your patient listening. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. We have the first question from the line of Mr. Kostu Pavaskar from Shade Khan. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, thanks for giving the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is on the capacity utilization. So for, we have seen sequential improvement in the uh, capacity utilization for all our three divisions. So can you help us what led to this, uh, uh, you know, uh, improvement in the utilization level and how confident you are uh, you know whether we should uh, expect this kind of improvement in the quarters ahead or there was something uh, uh, one of which uh, came into this quarter. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, we have seen a slight uptick uh, on uh, our home textile divisions vis-a-vis -vis capacity utilization levels. So Terry, Terry, the Terry division stood at 65% up from 56, MS sheeting division moved up marginally to 58 from 53. Um, the spinning um, moved up to 90 from 75. Um, you know, uh, we did see some um, encouraging signs um, on the horizon as far as uh, the demand and optic appetite is concerned is what uh, drove uh, some of these utilizations up. Uh, we expect uh, some incremental improvement, stability slash improvement on the utilizations um, uh, going forward is what we currently foresee in line with uh, what we've shared earlier that we will continue to see progressive improvement going into the second half. So we have seen some in Q3 and uh, we should see a stable, if not incremental, improvement on the utilization front um, going forward. Right. Uh, so, can you give us some idea about the order book, uh, order booking in 
uh, your uh, 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 bed sheet and table towel space you know what is the current order booking and how the things are panning out in the export market because uh, there was a, a concern regarding the uh, inventory pile up uh, with the retailers so now how are the things and you know uh, when do you expect uh, things to normalize in some of your key export markets so um, um, we, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot uh, customer we cannot specifically uh, share with you numbers of our order books that's not something that we usually do but uh, you know we have seen an uptick in order books uh, in Q3 vis-a-vis uh, -vis Q2 as is visible in our numbers um, you know we are seeing rel uh, relative uh, stability uh, slash some signs of uh, improvement uh, you know uh, in our order books for Q4 so I think we should see some progressive improvement um, you know uh, and uh, as far as normalizing our performance is concerned I think you know uh, with this progressive uh, sort of improvement in operating performance we'll head towards normalcy over a few quarters is what we think it should be driven by a bunch of factors uh, you know, on the one hand, uh, you know, the inflation has to cool down uh, some more on the cotton front, on the energy front, um, and um, on the supply chain front. Uh, both, all these three areas seem to be um, a little, um, you know, uh, it's still a little heavy on the inflation uh, side and, and needs to see some flexion. Um, and parallelly, we're working to, um, you know, uh, to get our revenue run rates back on track. Um, so both these things need to be happening parallelly for us to, um, you know, look at normalizing our performance. And that's what we're working on. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks for that. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star 1. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Mikun Aswath from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, just wanted to um, uh, get some sense on what is the cost of debt because uh, our interest costs have uh, moved up despite uh, you know the uh, uh, debt coming down. So, just wanted understand how you see the trajectory of that um, over the next uh, couple of quarters as operational performance improves but uh, just wanted to understand on that part right uh, so our, our cost of debt has been largely range bound uh, one of the reasons you're seeing this um, upswing on interest numbers is because some of our subsidies uh, had phased out um, but some fresh subsidies will face back in in due course so uh, to that extent uh, you know this uh, difference uh, will stand substantially reduced and um, the cost of debt per se of course has inched up because of interest rates going up marginally um, you know which is visible across sectors and um, you know is nothing unique to us um, so it's a combination of these two factors. I, uh, I repeat, there were some subsidies which were phased out and stood completed. Um, there is a new um, uh, pipeline of subsidies which will come back in, and therefore, uh, to that extent, we should not see this uh, movement. And the other factor that contributed to this was the increase in interest rates across the board. Um, you know, uh, both of these factors uh, contributed to the increase in interest costs. Our, uh, what would uh, that subsidy amount be, sir? Uh, we can't specify it, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it would be, <coughs> um, you know, the delta that you're seeing between, uh, you know, the increase in interest uh, costs in total is largely contributed uh, by that as far as this quarter is concerned. So um, we should get that back uh, either uh, by the next quarter uh, uh, or thereafter. All right, sir. 
And just wanted to understand in terms of, uh, you know, there has been significant improvement in the uh, margins this quarter. Is this primarily led by the uh, cotton price coming down? Or have we been able, have we seen any other uh, improvements in uh, uh, the uh, uh, operational side for us to achieve this? I just wanted to understand. Yeah. The confluence of factors. It's uh, it's uh, you know some improvement on revenues. It's uh, improvement on the raw material costs, which have started started to cool down in the third quarter with the arrival of the new crop. Um, we had some taming down on the energy front in terms of costs, and we also had some easing out of supply chain costs. So in all of these in tandem contributed to the improvement in operating performance, generally speaking. And um, listen, we still have a distance to cover, you know, vis-a-vis our normal performance metrics. So uh, these were the factors that contributed to the extent of improvement that you saw in Q3. So, so this one last one, in terms of uh, obviously some impact of the cotton price on that okay. You see, Q4 things being Sorry, similar to Q3. We are losing your audio, sir. Just wanted to check. Between Q3 and Q4, seen improvement in uh, these metrics, or they're not visible, sir. Well, I'm so sorry. You were not audible. Um, I, I, I don't follow your question. Can you hear me now, sir? A little better, yes. Yeah, I was just saying that between Q3 and Q4, so far. Are the metrics that we were working with in terms of cotton, fuel, and other items improved for you, or are they largely uh, similar to what we saw in Q3, sir? Just wanted to get a sense. As I said uh, to the gentleman uh, earlier, uh, you know, we are seeing a stability slash incremental improvement across these metrics as, as things stand now. So um, that's the direction we are currently seeing. Um, so, you know, vis-a-vis -vis order books slash revenue streams, vis-a-vis -vis from trail costs, vis-a-vis -vis other costs, um, you know, uh, we are going, we are seeing stability slash incremental improvements, marginal improvements at this point. That's and just one last one. Um, I, I, I remember reading on the uh, announcement, corporate announcement, that you are looking to raise some equity uh, uh, is that via rights issue or some placement or this is an enabling provision that you've taken? So I just wanted to get a sense. Uh, just hold on, please. Uh, so uh, we plan to raise uh, a small amount of uh, uh, capital through FCCBs, uh, which is probably what you read uh, about. Uh, yes. We'll be happy to take you through details, uh, you know, vis-a-vis uh, -vis what we've shared in public domain um, you, with you offline. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question, press star and one on that touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Sankar Subramaniam from Organic Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you alluded to uh, a certain hope uh, that things will stabilize uh, going forward. Out of various levers uh, that you have, which are the ones that you think have uh, better chances of resetting? Uh, what is the kind of landscape that uh, you are in the midst of? Um, I'm not sure I get your question. So, you know, as I outlined, there will be a few factors that contribute to normalizing performance. So there has to be, you know, our revenue streams that need to be normalized, our raw material input costs which still remain high to need to soften uh, from their current levels. Um, the energy costs, supply chain costs have to also come so down. These are exactly the factors that I'm referring to. Uh, yeah. Out of all these that you're listing, uh, yes. Where are we in terms of a reset? Uh, because it's been a while that you know we've been at, at this kind of performance level. So when you're when you're when you're hoping for a, a, a certain revival, 
uh, where are we with respect to each one of these factors? Well, I can. I'll be happy to take you through, you know, more specifics offline, uh, 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 because it'll be involving. A no, Mr. Himanshika, uh, you know, uh, this has been the pattern. Every time we have a question, most of the times you are saying we'll take it offline because people don't get the answers. Uh, this is a straightforward question, right? No, it's not actually. Uh, I beg to differ because you know to to satisfy your query, I need to spend some time with you and explain to you. No, know. there aren't too many people in the queue, Mr. Kamathinka. I mean, these are these are questions that I think your investors will need, right? So I'm, um, uh, Venkat. You know, I'm sorry. Uh, this is all I can share at this point. We need to correct. Our, we need to take our you know revenue streams back to normal levels. We need to see cotton, which is currently at 65,000 rupees a canty, coming down a little further. Energy costs need to correct. Supply chain costs need to correct. These are the factors that will contribute to normalizing our performance. Um, you know, when when you ask me where are we vis-a-vis -a, -vis a reset, and I'm unable to understand your question. Uh, yeah, I, I think you you kind of answered now. So cotton needs to reset from 65,000. Uh, down to uh, maybe something like about uh, three, four, five percent more. No, it needs to go down to around 50 levels. Uh, you know, there are challenges around the MSP on that front, so one has to see that. But you know, it needs to correct at least another 20 percent or so, broadly speaking, which it, and it will meet barriers after 10, 12 percent corrections. Energy prices, you know, as far as uh, you know, materials like coal are concerned, are still up there. They need to correct a fair bit. We have seen some corrections on those funds happening over the last couple of months, uh, but it's still way up from their normal levels. Um, you know, supply chain has eased uh, from all the various factors. I think supply chain is the one that's eased uh, quite a bit, freight rates and things of that nature, which works well for our clients also. And um, you know, uh, I would say of all the three. Operating costs, supply chains corrected the most. And as far as revenue is concerned, as I said earlier, we have seen some, um, you know, uh, positives as far as you know demand is concerned. We are beginning to see some green shoots there. Um, so hopefully, over the coming quarters, we should progressively improve vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, our revenue streams heading back to normalcy. And to your other comment that we have been in this level of performance for a le very long time is an incorrect statement. We've been in this performance level, uh, you know, only for two quarters, the Q1 and Q2, which were severely hit by inflation. Um, you know, and we have subsequently come out of that in Q3. And as far as the previous fiscal is concerned, the first half was perfectly normal, and the second half was was impacted by inflation. Rather, the beginning of the impact started in the second half. So I'm not sure what you mean by we've been in this situation for a long time. Uh, no, uh, to, start, uh, to start with a couple of uh, observations, I think you fully answered the question that uh, you said we'll take offline. I think this, this really helped. Uh, and uh, as regards your finance, uh, you said uh, you know we are at uh, 70 plus crores for the quarter. Uh, you said a part of it is because of certain subsidies uh, that, that probably are getting reset. Uh, so what kind of uh, uh, impact has subsidy had and what can one can possibly pencil in? I, I cannot share the specifics of the subsidy numbers no. uh, uh, when cut. Uh, fair enough. Fair. No, that's fair. We don't, we don't want a specific number. But... Okay. Uh, it is, is is the working capital intensity decreasing? I mean, that's really the the the, the, the gist of the question. Yeah, that's a fair question. Uh, you know, our gross our gross debt has corrected from 2,977 crores at the end of June uh, to 2,898 crores at the end of September, and we further corrected to 2,766 crores at the end of December. So the total movement is close to 210 crores on the gross debt front from Q1 through Q3. Uh, a lot of this has been achieved through working capital uh, cycle rationalization. Um, so as far as that's concerned, we've seen some improvement and we've done some work on that front. Um, 
And as far as the subsidies is concerned, it's a you know um, uh, a certain certain subsidies uh, with the government phased out, and certain other subsidies which were in the queue will phase in, and hopefully hopefully should be visible, uh, you know, uh, starting Q4 slash Q1. Um, and as far as total interest costs are concerned, if you see uh, the movement, um, you know. Uh, if the movement is really more visible from Q4, FY22, you know, starting out uh, Q1 and Q2. As I said, these were for two reasons, increase in increase co uh, interest costs, and the second was this phase out. So the phase out part will sort of neutralize, but the interest cost increases, of course, there's nothing one can do about it at this point. So I would say that a substantial part of the increase in interest costs should be addressed. And uh, lastly, Mr. Himastika, uh, I think a, a substantial portion of the pain is because of utilization, which is really the result of, uh, you know, what, uh, what is uh, the uh, uh, inventory uh, clogging that's currently there and what kind of uh, demand outlook that you foresee. Uh, is that uh, looking a little more uh, promising just now? Uh, if you're almost halfway into the last quarter in, in any case now. It is. Bear in mind, Venkat, that at FY22, we clocked record revenues of 3,203 crores. Right. right. So we came out with FY22 with record revenues, with record realization, uh, with record capacity utilization. And the only challenge at that point was, you know, unprecedented levels of inflation vis-a-vis -vis the materials we use and vis-a-vis -vis our input costs. You know, that's when, so, you know, this started hitting, so our revenues were robust uh, through the year, FY22. It started correcting in F, uh, FY23, uh, Q1 and Q2, and has started seeing this, you know, journey back uh, to normalcy. I'm saying it's starting to see the journey back to normalcy begin, beginning this quarter. It will take some time. What spoiled the last four quarters in terms of operating performance was really the unprecedented levels of inflation. So now, you know, I think with that softening and all the other factors that I spoke about, you know, uh, we should see, uh, you know, both the cost and revenues head back. But look, there is overall sluggishness in the markets. It's, there's, 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 there's no doubt in the matter. Uh, you know, we are helped by the fact that we have a new Terry division. There's market share to be captured there. Uh, it has broader market access vis-a-vis -vis our sheeting division. Uh, it gives us more categories to play in vis-a-vis -vis what we had earlier. And so this helps us balance revenue streams when, you know, when times are challenging. So both these divisions put together uh, overall give us more market access, more client, uh, let's just say a larger client pool to feed into uh, and thereby enhances our probabilities to work on normalizing our revenues going forward. Most helpful, sir. And in that context, uh, uh, given given the current strength uh, that we have uh, with uh, with uh, Terry Travel just now, uh, how long do you think our journey could be towards actually getting back to our peak kind of revenue? Uh, meaning, you, you see, you seeing line of sight there. Uh, Venkat, on a lighter note, I'm the managing director, not a fortune, uh, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, asking you, I'm asking you a feel, sir. I'm not talking about a number. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm asking for your feel. I, I, I think we will progressively head to normalize our revenues, as I've said repeatedly, over the next few quarters, subject to, you know, broad normalcy prevailing in global markets. Right. Helpful. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Jatin from RTL Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Good evening, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, two, three questions. Um, so the first one is, uh, you know, the three factors that you spoke about in terms of inflation, uh, cotton, energy, and supply chain, these would be applicable to our, our competitors as well, right? So why are we as an industry not able to get price size and pass these costs on uh, to our customers? This industry has had this challenge, uh, Jatin, 
uh, you know, I've, I've always shared with investors that in this industry, at least this is my opinion and my point of view, uh, you know, pricing power has always been a challenge in this industry. If, if, if the volatility on the raw material front and other input fronts are extreme, in that, on, in, in the backdrop of extreme movements, this industry is challenged vis-a-vis -vis pricing power. Because, you know, most of our clients are global retailers, Fortune 500 retailers, and they have, they have challenges in resetting retail price points, you know, at the drop of a hat. Um, and um, uh, so, therefore, this, this is an industry-centric challenge, which is how I look at it. Ordinary cost movements, on the other hand, um, you know, in this industry are handled as follows. If you have a 8-10% hit, you have to absorb it. If you have a 8-10% credit, you get to keep it. That's, I mean, just, I mean, don't hold me to these specific numbers, but, you know, what this means is that ordinary cost movements are not sort of tampered with on either the client side or the supply side uh, as far as, you know, who gets to keep it. It's only when it gets extreme that these troubles begin as far as this industry is concerned. And that's why it's taking so much time for it to normalize. At the same time, I must also tell you that, you know, what we've seen as an industry over the last year has been unprecedented in history. There's never been a year of this nature in, in this industry's corporate history. So therefore, it is, it is a sort of extreme, infrequent, unusual, extraordinary year that's, that's, that's been witnessed over the last 12 months. Understood, understood. Um, one more question on uh, the demand normalization. Now, I've been reading a few articles where they seem to suggest that the U.S. home textile demand um, in, you know, our India kind of first half FI22 uh, benefited a lot from the fact that there was COVID and people were at home. So do you think that the industry will go back to that kind of peak uh, revenues or, uh, you know, when you look at full normalization or do you kind of concur with the view that there was an excess there, which is unlikely to come back? So oh, I absolutely concur with the view that that was a, uh, let's just say, um, uh, 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 a more pointed increase in demand that one witnessed during COVID. Um, may, it may or may not return in that shape and form. But the company, uh, you know, has to continue to clock certain run rates on the revenue side given the fact that it has certain capacities. So if it's not coming out of COVID-led demand, it will come out of channel expansion, market expansion, and client expansion-led demand. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's just a theme that's going to change. It's not like before COVID, we didn't grow, right? We continue to grow. Um, right. That particular year, growth was uh, exaggerated uh, for reasons that were driven by work from home and, you know, all of the other factors that came with it. Uh, once that's done with, it doesn't mean that the growth of the industry slash any company operating in the industry is going to cease. It only means that that doesn't remain the theme of growth anymore. Other themes take over. And the other themes are including, are include and are not limited to channel expansion, client expansion, market expansion, category expansion, enhancing of product depth in terms of portfolios and so on. So, you know, there are a bunch of other factors that will continue to lead the way as far as growth prospects are concerned. Understood. And uh, a related question, in that phase we also saw, at least in the data that we see, that the market share for Indian players within U.S. home tex textiles, there was a very sharp market share increase, which also seems to be kind of normalizing now back to kind of pre-COVID levels. So is that also the right way to look at it, that that is also some, some excess which is unlikely to come back? Yeah, um, I, I haven't studied the specific data on how the share has been over the last three, four months. But, uh, um, you know, uh, if it has increased, it, it, it could correct. Uh, you know, I don't rule that out. 
but look at the other aspects that are also playing out in mean, you know uh, i'm talking at 30000 feet it may not it may not translate to quarterly movements but do bear in mind that there is still a underlying china plus one movement out there um there is a push for ftas that's playing out um there is also socio political challenges and now socio political and economic challenges being faced by pakistan um all of these factors will also play out so it's not just covid right there as i said that that's done with um new themes are going to play out and the new themes not only include the the first set of factors that i spoke about which are company centric factors of expanding its channel exposure or market exposure or client exposure or product exposure or category exposure it's also about these other macroeconomic factors which are which are the china plus one and all the issues being faced by pakistan and all the you know potential advantages that india said uh, india has said to gain uh, from should be be able to sign fcas and so on Uh, so these things are also on the horizon got it got it um one last question from my side um okay. this uh, uh, you know there is uh, the the capacity in the industry is what it is new capacities mm. will not be coming up any time soon as we see it at this point uh, this is himit singh's view um and it's not like there's a constraint on capacity there's is enough and more but you know further additions at this point will uh, don't seem to be coming about um and uh, you know the entry barriers to setting up capacities uh, you know also exist uh, vertically integrated capacities that is so keeping all this in mind uh, i think uh, if i look at a medium term there's a sound argument uh, for india's strength in this industry got it got it um and just one last question uh, this fundraise that you're doing from ifc any reason to choose the fccb route rather than a straight you know a preferential equity or something because that would have straight away improve your debt to equity uh, ratio yeah i think uh, we uh, we had some value propositions uh, that we wanted to um you know uh, play out as well uh, so that's what drove our decisions but it's an, it's a rather small amount so you know it's not going to materially change any of our metrics but it will make us stronger and we, we will we are onboarding a strong stake a, a strong partner um, um you know a strong name strong pedigree got it got it thanks thanks adan for patiently asking answering my questions Thank you sir. A reminder to all the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1. We take the next question from the line of Shashikant from Brighter Minds. Please go ahead sir. Yeah, uh, congrats sir for your uh, good set of numbers. Uh, so uh, my two questions are the first one is about the demand in US how it's improving or uh, do you see any uh, green shoot of demand coming back? yeah as i said we see some green shoots uh, you know don't interpret it to be anything more than that at this point please um, you know we are beginning to see some green shoots and we are working on all the other strategies as i said because you know there's no doubt in the fact that there's overall sluggishness you know that there is there exists uh, but you know but there has been some opening up there's also been some uh, you know movement on the inventory correction initiative taken by taken up by our, uh, the the key retailers globally during the first half of the fiscal um you know which uh, which seems to have eased out a little um so i think there are a bunch of factors playing out right the inventory correction initiatives sort of coming to head um uh, you know company centric initiatives which are led by market client category product channel expansion strategies 
uh, and then there's, there's the other macroeconomic bucket, which is, you know, the China plus one and all of that paying out. So I think it's a confluence of all things which will, which will uh, sort of support the element of improvement on the demand front, uh, you know. Right. Uh, sir, uh, one uh, more question. Uh, can you elaborate about the competitive intensity in the key markets? I mean, is it decreasing or uh, sort of uh, stabilizing at the same level that we saw in Q2, Q1? The competitive intensity, is that what you asked? Yeah, yeah, right. So competitive intensity vis-a-vis -vis our competition or what do you mean? Vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis competition, right, in the categories we are in. Yeah, it's, it's only consolidating, Sashi. Okay. So the consolidation theme is on and, uh, you know, as we, as we see it. Uh, so the, uh, there's nothing new on that front. It's not intensifying further or anything of that nature. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. That, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. we we'll take the next question from the line of Mr. Rashmik Oja, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so my question is on the utilization levels and the potential revenue we can generate because uh, last quarter we operated at 58% utilization in the sheeting division and 65% peri with 750 crore revenue which gives an annualized number of 3000 crore. I just want to understand what is the optimum utilization levels we can reach in both sheeting division and peri and can this take the turnover to between 4000 to 4500 crore in future? Um, yes, uh, it can, um, trust me. Okay. And, okay. Uh, these, these utilization numbers, uh, please differentiate between can and will. <laughs> um, you asked me a question, if that's theoretically possible, yes, the answer is yes, because the math is itself evident. Right. But I've also shared stakeholders before that, you know, our assets have been positioned to, if I look at our sheeting assets, our peri assets, you know, because spinning is uh, mainly a backward integration asset. Uh, so these two assets can clock revenues in that band, uh, you know, uh, depending on the product mix, point number one. Point number two, um, you know, uh, uh, we feel that, uh, um, we feel that uh, the, uh, uh, to, be, to your question of utilization numbers, uh, you see, these are net capacity utilization numbers. So in theory, it can hit a hundred. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, second related question is, you know, uh, if we do this kind of optimum utilization and with economy of scale, can the beta margins go to around 19, 20%? We because we have done 19, 20% few years back at optimum utilization. Yeah. So, so uh, not. Uh, can uh, I, I think uh, you know if some of these macroeconomic challenges vis-a-vis -vis inflation and things of that nature, which we just spoke about all this while, should they be in relatively normal bands? You know, if you look at the company's performance in FY17, FY18, FY19, you know, just before FY20 when it hit COVID in the second half, you know, and annual numbers were disturbed. Even look at look at FY20 through H1, FY17, FY18, FY19, FY20 through H1. Those kind of EBITDA numbers, tolerated financials were always there. So it will be our attempt to try to normalize performance going forward. Um, you know, so it's not like 19, 20% numbers have not been achieved. They have been achieved. Uh, so it will be our endeavor to sort of regain that. Uh, sort of performance metric. Uh, it's only a question of when. Uh, thanks. That's very encouraging, sir. Uh, my next question was on the debt repayment schedule. Uh, if you can just give some color of, you know, in the next two years, that is FY24 and FY25, how much is the debt uh, repayment obligation? And against that, we have around cash of 100 crores plus we're raising 100 crores. Will this, will this 200 crores be sufficient enough? Uh, to take care of uh, the cash, the needs of your cash flow management for the next one to two years? Yeah, so we have, you know, including um, unsold scripts and all of that, over 200 crores in cash. 
and um, we have um, you know debt obligations uh, which are um, you know reasonable we don't uh, see any we don't foresee any issue on that front but if you need any further details uh, you know although mr dinkat may not like to hear this but i'll have to take it offline no problem sir Uh, sir, uh, there was one more commentary from one of your competitors. You know that they have also tied up with Disney for uh, for for betting in in the Europe region, uh, which we also had earlier. So you know, uh, is was there any exclusivity which we had, or uh, Disney can tie up with any other players and? Uh, that was not exclusive. Okay, okay. The five okay. players. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Uh, that's it. I'll come in the queue, sir. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Miss Prerna Junjunwala from Ilara Securities. Please go ahead. Um, hello, sir. So, wanted yeah. to understand this global uh, landscape on supplier base. Uh, Pakistan uh, and Turkey, uh, they are larger players to uh, suppliers to Europe and US, apart from India and China. so these two countries are facing issues with respect to uh, cotton availability or their own currency being unstable so uh, do you think uh, india in this entire situation can gain market share uh, going forward uh, or how are we seeing our suppliers our customers talking on this this angle prena i think the, the theory around all this points to you know india gaining market share uh, has it happened as yet it has not you know is there talks and discussions around it all the time there is um, i think in the next couple of months we'll see how this pans out these will be the challenges the jurisdiction like pakistan facing you know at this point for example uh it's not just their currency and cotton but their issues with you know movements at port and various other issues so you know as i said clients seem to be on alert uh, but how will it pan out in terms of movement of market share we'll, we'll see over the next few months uh you know it'll take that much time and um, yeah my that's my view on pakistan and as far as china plus one is concerned i think that team seems to be playing out slowly and steadily um it is going to be it's going to be in one way country centric one way company centric you know oh. obviously yeah. okay okay and uh, sir in the us also we see uh, many retailers closing stores and stuff so how is that uh, uh been seen uh, from your customer base because we see walmart we see bedwars and beyond they're all closing stores so um, some color on the customers how they are managing uh, within brands and mass segments and uh, how are how are they planning their inventory some color on that that would help us to understand the landscape they are planning their inventory clean um you know uh, i don't think anyone out there wants to be heavy on inventories um, that's pretty certain and um, chains like bbb are going through the turbulence that they are these are the himasinka our exposures you know to bbb is has been substantially reduced it's in low single digits um um and um you know i i, I don't see any change on that front uh, they will rationalize so the you know the uh, issues like let's say or challenges like bbb uh there will be larger quantum of store rationalization but other retailers you know it's ordinary cost movements in terms of you know them wanting to shut down some less effective stores and less productive stores it shouldn't disturb the numbers as far as their offtake from us is concerned materially i think what's what sort of you know uh, the the inventory correction piece is still playing out a little although it's advanced quite a bit but it still has some uh, you know uh, it has still has some 
time left to play out completely and um, you know there's generally a sort of air of caution around with all that's that's being seen across industry and sectors as we all you know as we all see every day so with that overall caution they want to be lean on inventories they want to make sure at least in most cases that you know unproductive stores etc are you know rationalized to your comment um you know uh, given all this uh, at the same time we are seeing some green shoots somewhere um, in some buckets uh, for for some demand to come come back when i say come back it's visa v what was lost right so over the last two quarters three quarters as you all have observed there was demand lost and so when i say we're seeing some green shoots so off that total loss we're seeing some of it gradually claw back that's what we're seeing on the horizon okay. but as i said it'll be led by not just you know um it not be it's not going to be led by same store sales <laughs> it's going to be led by a confluence of initiatives which include you know all these things of you know companies like us pushing for market slash client slash channel slash you know category expansion um, it's going to be led by the macro economic themes like the china plus one or issues that pakistan is facing etc and the fta's uh, you know as and when it plays out and it's also going to be led by some encouragement that the retailers are going to face once the costs come down a little and their margins also normalize a little and that's going to be encouraging for them as well so you know i think all of these things will play out in tandem in different proportions and ratios depending on the quarter depending on the product depending on the brand uh, there's no one size fits all uh, we can be different from competition and vice versa in terms of the specific quarter's performance but directionally speaking this is what we see thank you so much sir that gives lot of clarity uh, we now i'm done thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for the day i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments um thank you everyone for taking the time this evening to join us uh on this call i do hope i've answered uh, your questions um to you know to uh, to our best possible uh, levels uh, if there's anything else that you guys want to know about um and or brainstorm about just get in touch and we'll be happy to take you through thanks thank you again thank you Ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Ilana Securities Private Limited that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line